Hello and welcome to another e-learning episode as part of our dermatology module. With us today we have Dr. Michael Boffa, who is the president of the Maltese Association of Dermatologists and Venerologists and also a consultant dermatologist here in Malta, who will be speaking to us about um, the presentation and treatment of viral warts. Thank you, Dr. Boffa, for being with us here today. Um, on to my very first question. How uh, do viral warts commonly present? Yes, viral warts, um, as you know, are very common. Um, they usually present uh, in the skin as small growths uh, that can be raised above the skin surface. Um, the surface of uh, warts uh, is classically uh, roughened um, and sometimes fissured. Um, warts are usually small, um, uh, although occasionally you get clusters of warts um, uh, clustering in, in groups. They can affect any part uh, of the skin surface, um, most commonly on the hands, fingers uh, and feet. Um, they are in themselves painless, um, although at certain sites, for example on the feet, um, pressure on the warts can be painful, so warts on the feet um, uh, may be painful when one walks on them. Um, what different types of warts exist? Obviously, we'll be focusing on viral warts here. Yes, um, there are many types of warts, um, uh, and, and some of them, for example, are um, uh, due to um, uh, old age, um, seborrheic warts. Um, but we're going to be focus, focusing here on viral warts caused by HPV. There are many different uh, HPV strains, and uh, these produce uh, warts uh, in different parts of the body. Um, viral warts um, on the feet, which I was mentioning earlier, uh, tend to be painful um, and uh, this is a particular problem uh, at this site. However, elsewhere viral warts are usually asymptomatic and the problem um, mainly is because of their appearance. They can be um, unsightly. And as a problem, viral warts, how common are they? Um, they are very common. Um, in fact, I would say that m most people do get um, viral warts of some sort or other at some point during their life. Does it uh, actually give preference to a certain age groups? Yes, they are commoner in children and they certainly clear more easily uh, in children. With regards to the diagnosis of viral warts, how is it done? Yes, this is essentially a clinical diagnosis. Um, so the appearance of the wart is quite characteristic. Um, um, occasionally at certain sites there may be uh, some difficulties, for example uh, viral warts on the feet, so-called verruchi, can occasionally be difficult to distinguish from uh, corns. Um, and the useful clue is that um, plantar warts uh, typically tend to be painful uh, on application of pressure uh, from side to side, uh, as opposed to uh, corns, um, which are classically not painful when you press from side to side. Uh, another useful clue um, to diagnose viral warts is that um, the uh, skin striations uh, typically do not involve the surface uh, of the warts. With regards to prognosis, do viral warts have a favorable prognosis? Um, yes, um, uh, viral warts uh, will clear uh, in practically all patients in fact, without, without treatment, um, uh, even without treatment. However, they can take a long time to do so. So it's not unusual for viral warts to last for many months, and sometimes years. And you mentioned treatment. Obviously, there are a number of management options with regards to viral warts. What are the commonest ones? Okay, so the uh, first option really is to do nothing, and that is a reasonable option in certain uh, situations. Having said that, uh, there often is a lot of pressure um, from the patient and sometimes also from the family, parents, etc. Uh, to treat viral warts. Remember, viral warts are contagious um, and as I said earlier, they can be unsightly. So it is understandable that one would want to treat. 
Unfortunately, none of the treatments that are currently available uh, do actually kill the virus. What we are doing with treatment uh, usually is destroying the wart, uh, but this does not kill off the virus and it's important um, if you are going to undertake treatment, I think it is important to explain this to patients. Um, in terms of active treatment, probably the first line um, would be a wart paint. Um, uh, there are a number of different acids uh, on the market, salicylic acid, lactic acid uh, and others. And these are normally um, uh, available in a collodion base, uh, which is painted on the wart once a day. Um, the the uh, product dries very rapidly um, and it has a corrosive effect uh, on the wart and gradually the wart will become um, eaten away essentially. Um, it's important when you're using a vinyl wart to uh, rub the wart down with a pumice stone or a nail file or emery board uh, before uh, applying the treatment um, um, to help it penetrate deeper. Uh, incidentally, um, apart from viral, uh, apart from wart paints, um, these acids uh, can be uh, available in other forms. Nowadays, there are, um, for example, pen applicators. Um, and, and other uh, methods of applying the acid direct to the wart. A, common long, a commonly known treatment option is obviously cryotherapy. What can you tell us about it? Okay, yes, this is a, a commonly used uh, treatment, uh, particularly by, by dermatologists, but also by, by uh, other um, um, doctors, um, where the warts are frozen with a cryogen, usually liquid nitrogen. Um, it can be painful, um, but um, if, if used properly, um, it is not. Uh, it is it is tolerated, um, and it can have a beneficial effect in speeding up clearance of warts. Having said that, cryotherapy, cryotherapy does not kill the virus; um, it destroys the wart. It's interesting that um, although it's widely used, we do not know how it works uh, exactly. One theory is that because of the inflammation that cryotherapy produces, um, uh, this may stimulate uh, an immune response uh, to the virus because the uh, inflammation helps present the uh, antigen of the virus uh, to the immune system and in that way speeds up um, development of an immune response. This is an attractive hypothesis, although uh, the evidence, uh, the hard evidence for it is uh, is rather scanty. I also understand that obviously good use of cryotherapy may be beneficial, but it also entails a number of possible com complications. Can you elaborate? Yes, as I said, it is, it is pain painful uh, and because it produces a very cold um, uh, temperature in the, in the skin, it can injure um, the uh, surrounding structures. Um, can damage the pigment cells in the skin, so it can produce um, uh, hypo or hyper pigmentation. Um, it can damage hair if applied to hairy areas. Uh, it can damage underlying structures such as, na um, such as nails, um, uh, nerves and uh, arteries, uh, although this is uncommon uh, if used properly. I understand that viral warts are commonly treated in primary care. Um, but sometimes certain cases may warrant specialist referral. Uh, what can you comment on this? Well, I would I would add um, to other t um, to the treatments. Um, other treatment options uh, include uh, duct tape. This is interesting. You apply a piece of duct tape to a wart, um, uh, leave it on for six days, uh, remove it, and then reapply another piece of of duct tape. Uh, after a um, few hours um, and you keep on doing this until the wart disappears and curiously there have been studies that show uh, a reasonable response. Um, plantar warts uh, may be treated with formaldehyde soaks um, which is a somewhat specialized uh, treatment usually recommended by a dermatologist. 
Um, and there are some other uh, options. Surgery I would not recommend as a general rule because this produces scarring um, and um, unfortunately the results are not uh, that good. In terms of cryotherapy, the ideal treatment interval um, is probably around three to four weeks. Um, more uh, frequent uh, treatment um, is not uh, associated with a better clearance rate. Um, in terms of referral, um, as I said, the natural history is for wards to disappear. So I think it is reasonable uh, in primary practice to treat um, wards um, and delay referral for common wards. Um, however, if a patient uh, insists on um, um, referral, then perhaps one should um, consider referral in, in situations where wards are numerous, where they are um, perhaps causing some problems because of local uh, pain. Um, but certainly typical uh, viral wards, uh, where there's no doubt about the diagnosis, uh, do not need specialist referral routinely. On the other hand, uh, if a ward does not behave like a ward, uh, then uh, referral should be considered. Um, I recall a case, for instance, of what was thought to be a plantar ward, which continues enlarging, um, and eventually um, was referred, um, and it proved to have been um, a, a neoplastic lesion squamous carcinoma. Um, these are unusual, but certainly one should not forget the possibility. And one last question, Doctor, before we conclude. What can you tell us about genital warts? Yes, these are caused by particular HPV viruses. Um, they are important in themselves, um, but also because they are associated uh, in females with uh, increased risk of cervical uh, cancer. Um, the other important aspect is that um, viral warts are often associated with other sexually transmitted infections in the individual patient. So it is important that a patient with uh, genital warts um, is referred um, uh, to um, a genital urinary physician for screening for other uh, uh, STIs. In conclusion, doctor, your take home message for today. So my take home message on viral warts is positive. Um, viral warts uh, will disappear uh, in almost all cases, even without treatment. However, they can take a long time to do so. Um, in truth, viral warts will disappear and not come back, probably only when you develop, when a patient develops um, an effective cell mediated immune, uh, immunity um, to, the, to the virus. Thank you, Dr. Boffa, for your time. I trust that this e-learning session has helped to further elucidate your understanding of the presentation and treatment of viral warts. Uh, may I remind you that this e-learning session was brought to you by the Synapse in collaboration with the Maltese Association of Dermatologists and Venerologists. I encourage you to complete this e-learning experience through completion of our multiple choice questionnaire, which is attached. For more e-learning resources, follow us on thesynapse.net forward slash CME. Thank you.